Hello, I'm Robert Bolaños and welcome to the analysis, design, and simulation of a forward converter part 5. Uh, in this uh, video lecture, uh, these are the three topics that I'm going to try to cover. I'm going to show the effects once you design uh, in part part 4 we design uh, the output filter and uh, and uh, but uh, we're gonna do a simulation since it's undamped so I'm gonna show the effects or at least show run a spy simulation show how uh, if your output filter is undamped what kind of uh, uh, ringing you're gonna get and then I'm gonna show you how to fix it so basically that would be the second show how to damp the filter and the technique is well well known and straightforward and then uh, item number three I'm going to show a simulation showing uh, the forward operating in a continuous conduction mode which is what we want well, we want to operate in a continuous conduction more uh, if you watch uh, video number four the continuous conduction mode means that the output inductor always has uh, current it's it, the, in other words the current never goes to zero and that's what we want and if the inductor current goes to zero then you go into what is called discontinuous conduction mode in other words uh, it's a unstable um, operation of the of the forward converter so basically you want to operate in continuous conduction mode because it remains pretty much stable and if you enter into the discontinuous conduction mode then what you get it's un unstable specifically you get peak detecting okay and what is that well in our regulator a power supply it's designed to output 3.3 volts okay once it enters into discontinuous conduction mode the 3.3 actually starts ramping up okay so I'm going to show a simulation on that okay and let me go real quickly quick review Oh, well, we did. Okay. Uh, basically, I showed the definition of continuous uh, conduction mode and discontinuous. And I also showed how the current through the inductor, you can think of it as two parts. You can think of it as a DC component, which has a frequency of zero. And then you have an AC component which has a switching frequency. In this case, I'm using 100 kilohertz. And that this AC actually tries to go through the ESR and the capacitor because it presents a much lower impedance than the R load. Okay. And the next important was that you can use this current AC and if you multiply times the ESR that will set typically your ripple voltage okay and show the simulation where I was able to produce uh, approximately 33 picofarads or no I'm sorry 33 uh, millivolts I believe it was 27 okay well anyway so let me go ahead and uh, continue and I'm gonna go ahead and show the effect this one item number one okay so I'll go to the simulator okay and uh, in the last simulation I think I have a resistor here but instead I'm gonna go ahead and put a current source okay this is our active load okay and these are the values that we got okay so I'm gonna go ahead and let it run okay. 
Now, in this case, you'll see the capacitor in this R7 is simulating the ESR. So I should put ESR to avoid confusion. So that would be the ESR. Okay, the ESR is the internal uh, equivalent series resistance. It's internal to the capacitor. It's not a resistor that you add. It's a resistor that it is internal. Okay. And the simulation is close to completion. Okay. This is what I wanted to show you. This bottom graph is the current, okay? And let's go ahead and zoom in. And if you look at uh, video number four, we had designed this to have a delta of approximately 100 milliamps. Okay, and we'll verify that. Okay, 98 milliamps, that's correct. And then we'll go ahead and zoom this, and it was, I believe, close to 33, or lower than 33. We'll look at the delta. We'll take the Y2 minus Y1, about 30 millivolts ripple, which is what we wanted, okay. But, this is what you end up if you have a undamped system output filter. Basically, you get ringy. Okay. And in most cases, you have to keep in mind that this is supposed to be a 3.3 .3 volt regulator. It's 3.3. .3. And you may have this powering a system that might be very, very sensitive and might not work if you get or if you slam it with 6 volts as in this case or 5 volts and so forth so this type of situation is very dangerous for your load in case you have a very sensitive load so how do you fix this okay well this is telling me that you have a lot of reactants in this case we have a reactance of your inductor and your capacitor it's ringing at uh, the the frequency of um, 1 divided by 2 pi square root of lc okay so that's the actual frequency that it's uh, ringing okay so with that in mind we have to damp it okay so how do you damp it okay let's go ahead and uh, go back here for a little bit okay now if you have a system in this case I have the inductor and I have a capacitor and basically for all interests and purpose the 33 uh, 333 milliohms you can kind of neglect okay but basically if you have one 97 micro Henry and I believe it was a 15 micro hand microfarad what you want to do is you want to insert a resistor basically in series okay of the appropriate value and typically you add a resistor equal to the natural resonance or the natural impedance of this circuit so basically it's your L divided by C okay so let's go ahead and see what value is appropriate in this case it would be 15 micro farads okay so let's see what we get okay so in this case it would be 187 micro Henry divided by 15 
microfarads and you end up with 13.13 okay let me write that 13.13 okay so let's see what happens okay we'll go back to the simulator and what I'll do is let me go ahead and add a resistor in series and this would be an external resistor it would not be an internal ESR okay and we go 13.1 okay so go ahead and run it okay now some of you may have already guessed that the ESR sets the ripple okay and the smaller the ESR the lower the ripple and you may have guessed while well, I'm putting a ESR or a resistor in series with the ESR which is much much higher so some of you may guess that the ripple will go up and if that is your guess you are correct the ripple will go up but it will damp the circuit so hopefully we'll show that Okay. I'll remove the current. Okay. And if you notice, this is a voltage. And now you will see that it's, it is damped. You no longer have the ringing but you have this ripple now as a matter of fact it's unacceptable it's actually way above what we uh, initially wanted in fact we have approximately 1.3 volts a ripple so what do we do okay well you still use the resistor but you connect it in parallel okay so let's connect that okay so this we can call it as a, or you can call it a snubber or a damper a damping resistor okay and typically you put a capacitor which is 10 times the value of this capacitor okay so since this is 15 microfarad you want at least 150 microfarads in parallel and that would be the equivalent of adding it in series but it will not affect the ESR uh, of the circuit in other words you will keep your 33 millivolt uh, uh, spec so let me go ahead and run it and change this to 150 okay so there's 150 so I'm going to go ahead and run it and I'll label this as damping resistor okay or you can also call it a snubber Okay, this should be good enough. Okay. Okay. Okay, it looks like it's still ringing. It looks like it did an error. Let me go ahead and go back. And verify. OK. 
Okay. Okay, let me take a look at this. Let me redo this again. Let's see. Okay. So we'll say actually it should be three point six. Okay. So this is wrong. This should be 3.6 ohms. Okay. So let me put the right value. So change this from 13. Okay. And it did look like it did reduce the ringing. Okay. From when it was open or didn't have a damping. So 3.6. Okay. And let me save this. I'm going to save this. Save. Okay. So now I'm going to rerun it with the proper damping resistor. Okay. Now it's this is much much better. Okay. So this is damped. Okay. So let's go ahead and uh go to the history add at the selection so we went from this which is undamped okay to a damped okay now the next important thing is do we achieve the 33 ripple that we originally wanted and it looks like we're pretty close, 27.7. So indeed, it does does work. So basically, if you do have a, a uh, an output filter, you're gonna have an inductor, and you're gonna have your filter, and you always make sure that you add another filter, 10 times bigger, and you actually add an external resistor with this one with the damping uh, da damping cap. You add a damping resistor, and that will damp. Uh, the circuit okay so this is a very important uh, subject if you're designing a power supply make sure that your output filter is damp uh, correctly damped okay so now the second item which has already been completed is that one okay so now I want to show the simulation showing the effects of the continuous conduction mode and discontinuous conduction mode okay so we'll go to the simulator okay and uh, I'm gonna go ahead and plot the current through I no L5 so I'll take the asterisk off of that and I'll go to the current source and I'll select piecewise okay I'm not sure you'll be able to see this okay so piecewise you uh, what you do is you enter time and then voltage so in this case at time zero I'm gonna have one amp flowing through the current source and then at four milliseconds I'll have one and then six milliseconds I'll have a hundred milliamps and then at eight milliseconds it'd be a hundred milliamp peak okay or actually a hundred milliamps and then it's gonna go below at 8.1 milliseconds I'm gonna drop it to five milliseconds so it should at 8.1 milliseconds all the way to 15 that should be discontinuous conduction mode and between 6 and 8 that should be right at the border and from 0 to 4 milliseconds that would be continuous so hopefully you should be able to see the effects okay so this will be a little a longer simulation so we can get to see the entire three states
okay looks like the simulation is almost ready <coughs> okay and here we go okay so remember this is the current going through the inductor okay and if you notice that's the average but here you can see that this is the ripple okay so it goes up to 1.1 and then it goes to 0.9 so the current in the inductor never goes to zero okay and as you can tell it's close to the 3.3 .3, okay and then right here from this section to that section right here we're very close to the critical or the boundary okay just right there okay if you notice again the ripple in the inductor never falls to zero okay there's a little bit of margin so we're close to the conduction or the or the boundary okay very close okay and then at approximately 8.1 okay right there okay right there you can see that basically it's very close to zero okay and what happens if you notice the voltage is starting to go up okay let me zoom out a little bit and if you notice it's peak detecting okay so basically during this time this is continuous conduction mode this part is the boundary or close to the boundary okay and keep in mind that during this time it's within regulation okay but then when you get down to here this is the discontinuous conduction mode okay what happens it starts peak, de peak detecting okay so that's why we don't want to operate in a discontinuous conduction mode because the voltage starts going up okay and keeps going up until it reaches a certain level okay so that's uh, one of the things the main ideas that I wanted to get across it's a very important concept that uh, you want to be sure that you're always operating in the continu continuous conduction mode. Uh, if you have any questions, you can uh, email me at rbola35618 at aol.com. If you have any comments, uh, feel free to uh, uh, email me or if you would like a copy of the SPICE files or the lecture notes uh, email me and I'll send them to you thank you for watching